Welcome to Team Tip Tuesday, demonstrating everyday life skills. The more we know, the better we live. Brought to you by OSU Extension. My name is Katie Schlagheck, the Family Consumer Sciences Educator at the Ohio State University Extension in Ottawa and Sandusky Counties. Today's team tips, we're talking about five tips to play with and interact with a small child. Now when you think about this, think about playing with or interacting with when you're babysitting or if you have a young niece or nephew that you might not see all the time. Ways to play and interact with them to make that meaningful. And this is my special buddy helping me out today. This is Paige. And so my first tip is to know the child's ability. So the CDC has a list of milestones or guidelines for what a child might be able to do at a certain age. Now Paige is one years old and she can sit up and she can crawl and she can babble. Uh, but she cannot stand and she cannot walk. So other children at this age might be able to do those things, and that might kind of guide the interactions you have with them. So children that are about one years old do a lot of sensory play, so they do a lot of play using their senses. So that's why a lot of times you will see kids put things in their mouth, and they like to feel and feel different textures, and they like to make a lot of noise. So they're just using their senses to kind of learn about the world around them. Uh, my second tip, is that children at this age, about one year, experience what they call stranger danger. So if you don't interact with that child a lot, don't see them a lot, they might not warm up to you very much and maybe kind of shy away from you, which is very normal at this age. Might take them a little bit of time, but eventually they should warm up to you. My third tip, and probably one of the most important, is when you are having an interaction with a child, so you want to get down on their level. So if you're standing, it's very intimidating to a child. They can't see your face, they can't really have an interaction with you. So you really want to kind of get on their level <laughs> so they can see your face and they, they can have some interactions with you. All right. So my fourth tip is to really try and have some interaction with the child by talking to them. So even though she can't really talk to me, um, she can just babble, uh, but I can also imitate and I can kind of have a conversation back and, forth with, back and forth with her. I can also kind of talk about what she's doing and describe it and just kind of talk through the activity. So we give her her xylophone. You gonna play some music for us? Oh, you gonna play some music? Oh, that's beautiful music. Oh, now we're gonna go for our block. Block in one hand, xylophone in the other. There you go. So I'm just kind of giving her some encouragement and kind of talking uh -huh. through talking through the activity. And my fifth tip, as you kind of just saw, uh, if a child gets fussy or starts crying, it might not necessarily mean anything is wrong. Uh, it could mean a couple different things. It could mean that they're bored with the activity and need to find something else to do. Uh, it could mean that they're tired or hungry or just maybe overstimulated if they have too many activities or toys in front of them. So those are my five tips uh, to help you to play with and interact with a small child and make that play meaningful. Once again, I'm Katie Schlagheck and this is Paige Schlagheck with the Ohio State University Extension in Ottawa and Sandusky County.